so let's just refresh what we were talking about while the um, re recording was off. We took a, we looked at each of these assets and liabilities. Now, as you see with the assets, it starts with the most liquid asset. Cash is the most liquid. It's it's as convertible as you can be. Accounts receivable will be coming in the form of cash soon, so it's next. These are resources a company owns that provides benefits. Supplies, we have on hand $1,000 of supplies that have not been used yet. Prepaid insurance is insurance we've paid up front, and so we don't record it as an expense until that time of period of time has lapsed. So when you pay insurance for a year up front, each month you will take away that prepaid insurance and show it as the expense used. The equipment, computers, um, monitors, printers, copiers, $49.50. It totals $21,910. Then we've got our liabilities and stockholders' equity. The Again, they usually, well, never mind that. Um, we start with the more of the current liabilities. The notes payable may be a loan at the bank that we still owe. The accounts payable would be suppliers or creditors that we owe for services or for whatever purpose that it was an expense we incurred, we still need to pay them. Unearned service revenue would be monies that have come in that we have not yet earned. So my example of Joe wanting me to represent him in a tax audit, I require $800 up front even though I haven't earned the money. I have not done the work for him. So I show it as a liability until I actually earn, I complete the service. Salaries and wages payable of 1200 If we're dealing with October 31st, which is this balance sheet, um, there may be employees that work that week but aren't getting paid till November 3rd. So they've incurred, we've incurred the expense or the cost there and we still need to pay them. So that's showing on our books as a payable interest payable. So the total liabilities here are $95.50 and then we've got our stockholders equity which is the common stock <coughs> from the shares and the retained earnings of $23.50 that came from the previous page showing the ending balance of the retained earnings section. So then we've got that plug in here of $23.50 with our total stockholders equity being $12,000 360. And as you can see here, the total liabilities in stockholders' equity is totals, totals 21,910, and our assets total 21,910. The most important equation here you're going to see is called the accounting equation. You're going to see it again. Assets, you see assets of 21,910, will always equal our liabilities plus our stockholders' equity. Do you see how the 9550 of liabilities plus the stockholders' equity of 12360 equal 21910, which is what the assets are? So here we've got the balance sheet. <coughs> and then from there, which I'm not going to touch on at length today, but we also have a statement called the statement of cash flows. Now the reason we have a statement of cash flows is because in accounting, when we record our income and our expenses from the net income statement, we don't, we don't use the cash basis of accounting. And we'll talk about that down the road. But sometimes we have earned, we've, we've earned revenues that we haven't necessarily received yet. So they're sitting on our books as an accounts receivable. But we've earned these revenues, but yet we've not received the cash. So our income statement shows us the revenues we've earned and the expenses we've incurred. We haven't always paid out those expenses, but we've incurred them and we owe them. Where the cash flow statement shows really the cash that changed hands, the cash we used throughout the period, money in, money out. 
And the cash statement, cash flow statement is broken down in three activities, just like we talked about earlier. Every business has operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. So we show the monies that have flowed in and out through each of these activities, which ultimately then will sink in line with our cash 15,200 at the end of the period. Again, we'll talk about this down the road, but I want you to understand we care about cash because a business can be profitable, but if you're not getting cash to pay your bills, you're not gonna live. So cash is important for people to see you really have the means to pay loans back. So your cash flow statements show here in the operating activities, the reason a company's in business. They brought in 11,200 in revenues from operating the business. So the auto service brought in cash of 112. <coughs> they paid out during the period cash of 5,500. They invested in office equipment during the period. So they expended 5,000. Then for financing, they issued stock, which brought them money. They, it, they received a note payable, which is a loan, but it's cash coming into the business, okay? And then they paid a dividend. So the various different activities are broken down and shown here how the cash was used or brought in. And our ending cash balance should equal what we show on the balance sheet of 15-2. So again, it, it, all of the financial statements flow together. Which of the following financial statements is prepared as of a specific date? The balance sheet. Okay. Do that? You, <laughs> terrible, huh? So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. As you can see, there's a lot to cover, but I'm going to pick and choose those items of importance because we can talk about this down the road. <coughs> but most all public companies are required to issue various statements and specifically an annual report. Now, this annual report always includes the financial statements. There's something called the MDNA, the Management Discussion and Analysis, notes to the financial statements, and an auditor's report. One thing that would be helpful for you to do, actually, I'm going to do it right now. I'm just going to get online and pull up Target's annual report. So what we're talking about, Target has an annual report. And what this annual report shows is all the information, the 2013 financials. Here, I'll download the report. Can I? Well, you take the time to see, you're gonna have all the information that was discussed in here. It gives you, sometimes these reports can be hundreds of pages long, all the information pertaining to Target. Here's the 2013 financials here. So in this respect, it shows, and this is an easy way to look at it, they also provide you with the financial statements, but it shows you what their revenues were. It shows you their earnings before interest and taxes, their net earnings. Look how much they're down in 13. And you know, it provides you with all the information an annual report should. You might look at this. Target's something I'm probably gonna be focusing on because they've really taken a hit with the credit card scandal, and also with, um, they've had 
additional issues because of expanding into Canada. And that's really kicked their butts. Um, it was interesting, I had a student in my office, or in my class last night, who's from Canada. <coughs> and he said, you know, did Target even do marketing ahead of time before they ventured into there? Because most Canadians shop locally. They like the local um, stores. And even though price might be different, the Canadian culture is not one of going to the big chains. So I thought that was really interesting. That's been a big hit for them. So know there is an annual report. Know the, the items that it, those are some of the items it includes. Don't worry about the MDNA. The notes to the financial statements are required because they, there are certain notes or disclosures that are required to be stated um, that we'll get into down the road something we don't need to know now. There's also an auditor's report where an independent auditor comes in and cr um, prepares an opinion regarding the books. So it's listed in there. Let's not worry about that. Okay. Now, I'm only going to spend a couple minutes on IFRS. <coughs> the gist of what I want to tell you is that we have GAAP, which is called Generally Accepted Accounting Principles in the United States. Back in 2002, we developed a link to try to find a manner in which we can take the international accounting standards and find a way we can link IFRS or the Inter IASB, the IASB Board, International Accounting Standards Board, link with FASB, the Financial Accounting Standards Board, so we can come up with similar concepts and standards to report. Right now, U.S., the United States has GAAP, which are generally accepted accounting principles, which we have to adhere to. The rest of the world has IFRS, which are international standards. They vary. They have been spending 12 years to connect them. Need I say, we are still in the process of connecting them. The goal is to have financial statements that can be comparable. So if you're dealing with a U.S. company versus a company from another country, apples are apples. Right now it's not necessarily the case. So it makes to compare them difficult. So there are certain issues they're really fighting over, which is the issue. That's all I'm going to tell you about IFRS, okay? Do you think uh, before 2002, um, you know, you mentioned they would have more regulation and more scrutiny. Did they also clarify certain the way things are reported? So were companies doing <coughs> things a little different before then? There, it always was specified okay. how to record things, those standards have been in place, they just ignored them. Okay. For example, I'm going to give you an example real quick. We talked about insurance. When it's used up, it's an expense. I lease a building, it's rent expense. At the end of the month, that rent is gone. WorldCom, one of the big companies that had their hands slapped and they are no longer, basically had big cable lines that they leased. I'm, I'm giving you a complex, a, a very simple version, version of something complex. But they had cable lines they leased under the ocean for telephone services. Now, they leased those lines, but the transaction was complicated. But ultimately, they leased the lines. WorldCom on their books, instead of showing it as a lease expense, because it's used up, what they did is they showed it as an asset. So think of this. Every month you pay that bill, the millions of dollars, instead of showing it as an expense on your income statement, which reduces your net income, they, and they knew better, but they were trying to make their financial statements look good, and they thought, well, somehow we can show this as an asset as though it's 
a resource they have that's going to provide a future benefit, which it didn't. So what happened? They look good. Their assets were great. Compared to their liabilities, their assets were strong. Their income was high. <coughs> when they ended up getting exposed, they had to restate their financial statements. Think about it. The amount of assets they had to take off the book books had to get put on as expenses on the income statement. Do you, do you understand the huge fraud that occurred? Did they know how they should be recorded? Sure. We know that a building has a useful life of more than a year, generally 30 to 40 to 50. We know that rent, we don't have any benefit when we're done. But what happens with companies is they can make transactions commingled and complicated to where an average user doesn't really understand what they're dealing with. And so to make them look better, they showed it as an asset. Did they know better? Absolutely. So the standards haven't changed since 2002. What's changed is the consequences. We have the same standards. What is an asset? How do you, when do you record an asset? You know, when it's placed in service. But they just were fraudulent. <coughs> now what's happening with IFRS and GAAP is we're trying to be able to, when we re read a financial statement from another country, be able to compare that with a common type of entity or sector in the United States. Right now that's difficult to do because of the differences in concepts between GAAP and um, IFRS. That's all I really want you to know about that chapter, okay? What I do want to go through now are problems after problems after problems because that truly is the way you're going to learn, okay? So what I'd like to do is start with I had Course Smart in here. No. Let's look at the back of the chapter and let's look for, oh, it's in here. Some questions that we can go over. Okay. So I think the homework we have to do exercise 1-1, one, one, don't we? Any questions before I start? How are you guys doing? Excel. You can do it on plain Excel. paper and scan it in, or Excel. I would prefer something like that. Okay. Oh, I suppose yeah, you could do it. No, just do it on Word. You're going to line it up and follow it out. Okay. So you'll like take, you'll like create it, do it, put it, print it to a PDF, and then upload it to to you, and then you'll look at it. Or do you want the actual spreadsheet so that you can see the formula? Um, it doesn't matter. Whatever, however you want to do it, the, uh, you don't need to upload it to a PDF. You can just do um, submit it as a Word doc, so I can write on it too. Oh, okay. Excel. Can Excel. You put, can you put comments in Excel too? Just like absolutely. Just Absolutely. Okay. 
Okay, so I am on page what, guys? 40? No. What page is exercise 1, 2 on? Oh, here it is, right here. So we're going to start here. And again, all of these will be online for you. If you have questions, we can go through and figure them out. Um, exercise 1 2, we're going to start. The first. Can you read 1 2? No. Um, it's page 30. Exercise 1 2. Okay, so you will do for your homework assignment. You're going to do exercise 1 1 starting on page 29. Do you see that? Exercise 1 1 starting on 29. And then you're doing exercise 1 3, 9, 11, and 14. Well, if you look at 1 3, 9, 11, and 14, it's going to be on page 29, exercise 1. Then exercise 3 is, you see, on page 30. Now I forgot what the next number was. 9. Now exercise 9 will be on page 31. Exercise 11 is on page 32. 14 is on page 33. Then you'll be doing also problem 1-3a on page 35. Now what we're going to do here is do a lot of problems similar. Okay? So we're start, going to start with exercise 1, 2. Exercise 1, 2 basically says all businesses are involved in three types of activities. Financing, investing, and operating. Listed below are the names and descriptions of companies in several different industries. For each of the companies, Provide examples of a financing activity, an in investing activity, and an operating activity that the company likely engages in. So let's look at a BD Consolidated, manufacturer and marketer of newsprint. Okay? So a BD, let's look at a BD. We've got a BD. So it's a manufacturer of <coughs> and marketer of newsprint. So we are going to look at in um, financing activities. We're going to look at investing activities. And we're going to look at operating activities. Now, guys, there's not a right answer here. We're just trying to gain an understanding of what we're talking about. So, a BD, what would be an example of a financing activity? Stock. Issuing stock. Issuing stock. What's an example of an investing activity? Yep, and then operating activities. Sales of newsprint. Sales of newsprint. Any questions on that? Does that make sense? How each one is unique? Now let's look at Cal State. Cal State is a university student union. Okay, it's a student union. What kind of financing activities would they do? membership sales, but that probably would be an operating activity. <coughs> what? Well, this is the student union. So, so let's just say borrowing money. Okay? Borrowing money from a bank is basically going to give them money for financing. Okay? Next, what would be investing activities they might do?
Purchasing equipment? Yeah, purchasing a camera. What type of operating activities would they do? <coughs> Paying wages, let's say. Okay, that's money they're forking out to pay wages. <coughs> they might sell a membership. That would be part of the operating. They have to pay out wages to conduct their services. The next one is Oracle Corporation. Oracle Corporation is a computer software developer and retailer. How would we do it with financing? Stock. Issuing stock. How would we invest? Servers. Servers or even purchasing other companies. Okay. Other companies. And what about operating? Sales of software. Perfect. You got it. Software. Now we've got Sportsco investments. How do we do what would we do there with Sportsco? Again, issuing stock. Let's make, take it a little step further. How about paying dividends? You need to pay dividends to keep them happy. It is a portion of that invest investment. You issue stock, but then you need to also pay some dividends. What about investing? Sportsco deals with, ho it's a hockey club. Owner of the Vancouver Canucks Hockey Club. Yes. Purchasing players or equipment. And what about operating? Rent rental, rental for the rent too, uh, rental for the rink. What about Grant Thornton? Grant Thornton is a professional accounting and business advisory firm. How would we finance it? Bank. Loan from banks. How would we invest? Purchase computers, servers, furniture, and operating. Client bills, client sales. Make sense, guys, what we're doing here? Amen. What we're seeing is the difference between the various activities. Finally, Southwest Airlines. Sale so stock, sale of stock. Invest in what? Purchase, Purchase airplanes, <laughs> larger seats, you said. You know what? I agree with you, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah. And how would we operate? What, ticket sales, ticket sales, payment of jet fuel, payroll, make sense? So that really helps you understand the various activities. Now let's go back to this problem and in B it says, with which of the activities that you've identified are common to most businesses? Which activities are not? <coughs> well. Sale of stock is common to most all businesses, isn't it? Borrowing from a bank is common. Issuing stock, borrowing from a bank, paying dividends, they're all common. Those financing activities are common for all businesses. Let's talk about investing. Equipment. Equipment, it's going to be different based on the equipment, but generally we're going to purchase property, plant, and equipment. And then operating, those are, the those are the unique things based on the business, right? So it's the activities being paying wages, sales of software, they're all common, it's just unique to their business, okay? Perfect. Now, you had one three, I believe, for a homework assignment. <coughs> Let's look at one four now, okay?
Is this making sense, guys? I'm going to use an Excel that's easier. So, with Excel 1 4, One four. The information relates to Molina Company for the year 2014. It gives us a bunch of information. After looking at this data, prepare an income statement and a retained earnings statement for the year ended December 31st, 2014. Now we know which statement do we always start with first? The income statement. The most important thing that I want to get you guys used to doing is we start by a title. The title is going to be Molina Company Income Statement for the year ended December 31st, 2014. Now, are we dealing with a snapshot? We're dealing with a period in time, aren't we? So an income statement is a period in time. What do we start an income statement with? Revenues. Let's look here. <coughs> what revenues would we show? Service revenues, you see, of 58,000. So we're gonna start with service revenues of 58,000. Okay, actually I'm gonna cut and paste that there. Now, do we have any other revenues? Let's, okay, perfect. There aren't any. What about expenses? Let's look at these expenses here. Advertising expense. Not that it's a big deal, but do, when people do income statements, do they usually talk about the cash and the, the, the liquidity, but in expenses, do they do them alphabetically or do they do them any rhyme or reason? Or, or is it by, I mean, is there a You know what? You're asking me a question I really don't know the answer to right now. Usually, I would have to say a lot of times when I do them, I do them in alphabetical order because that's just the way the software does it. But I don't know that answer. Okay, so we have an advertising expense of how much? What's next? Rent expense. I'll give you a secret. How do you know they're an expense? Thank you. The rent expense is 10,400. What's next? Of what? What's next? And what's that? So our total expenses This is why I like Excel, guys. It makes your job easier. And then our net income. $13,400? How are you guys doing so far? Now, I'm kind of doing this on purpose but I'm not expecting it of you. Um, do you see, I'm trying to make my statement presentable. One thing I do require, if you have to do an income statement, it's not okay just to start with revenues. Make sure you put the title, okay? That is important. Then 
I don't care. The bottom line is that you list the items as they need to be. If you started with expenses first, that's wrong. You start with the revenues, then you create the expenses with a difference of net income. We're not worrying about this in this chapter, but we will start setting this up to where it's nice and readable. For purposes of what you're doing, on your quiz, you'll be able to upload Excel. So say you do a problem, and you can either just type it out in the little box, which is a pain, or you do an Excel, upload it, okay? Whatever you wanna do, I'm not caught up in perfection, but I am caught up in that, that title. Because we need to know what is the statement, who is it for, and what's the period, okay? <coughs> and guys, another thing, you don't, these are set in stone, how we create for the income, the income statement for the year ended, da da da, okay? Or for the period ended, da da da. Now, we need to do a retained earnings statement, don't we? So I'm just going to change this and call it a retained earnings statement. Right? There, for the year ended. Now, what do we start our retained earnings statement with? Good. Retained earnings, January 1st, is what? How do we know what it is? Does it tell us? 67,000. So it tells us retained earnings is at 67,000. Then from there, what do we need to add? Correct. We need to add net income. We receive that net income from here, don't we? What the heck? Then what do we need to subtract? Then we need to subtract dividends. Which gives us retained earnings December 31st of what? Does that make sense to you guys? Any questions at all? This is the type of exercises when I put some online. We're going to try to get through as many as we can today, so we'll have them done. But when you see, especially on WebEx or online, we're going to be doing it the same way. I'll have the book up here. So those of you who don't have the book, you'll see which problem we're going through. And then I'll go back and forth with my Excel so you can watch me do it. Okay. Any questions on that, guys? How are you doing? Do you want to do another one? Are we having fun? <laughs> okay, next one, let's do 1-5. Um, guys, the best way you learn it is do it over and over and over again. Let's do 1-5. Suppose the following information was taken from the 2004 financial statements of pharmaceutical giant Merck. And we see various things. We've got um, the um, retained earnings, the cost of goods sold, 
We've got selling and administrative expenses, dividends, sales, research. We've got all these various items we're looking at. We, again, need to separate these accounts into income statement and retained earnings. Stockholders' equity or retained earnings. <coughs> so we're going to take this information and we're going to prepare an income statement and a retained earnings. I can use this exact setup I have here. I'm just going to change it up. I'm going to take and make this Merck. The income statement for the period ended, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So, um, what would we do with our revenues? Sales revenue is what? Thirty-eight five seventy-six. Thirty-eight five seventy-six. What about our expenses? Uh, it looks like we've got three. Okay. Selling and admin expenses. Okay. Of eighty five forty three twenty. I'm ignoring the cents here, okay? In the R and D. Right. Is fifty eight forty five. What else? Income tax is what? Two, two, six, eight. What else? Cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold. Now, we have not started talking about cost of goods sold, but with many businesses, cost of goods sold is the merchandise that they sold, or it could be the products they built. So when Missa, Missa was building my cabinets, what would have been some of her cost of goods sold? Wood. The wood, nails, glue, ham hammer, those items to help build it. When a house is built, your revenues would be the sale of the home. The cost of goods sold would be everything that goes into the sale of that ho the home. The subcontractors, the brick, the plumbing, the heating, I mean, everything goes into that home. We'll talk about this down the road, but for now, it is an expense. It's, a, it's part of the expense. So cost of goods sold of $9,018.90 <coughs> gives us net income of 12901 right? Now, we have to do a retained earnings statement. Let's go and look at the book again. What does it tell us? Retained earnings as of January 1st, 43,969, right? 43,969. 43,699. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. 43. Like way off. 43,699. Our net income, we get over here of 12,901, right? Do we have any dividends? Yeah. 65, uh, 3598. What's this course mark thing you're going through? Is that just your resource? Is that what it's, that it's free. That's not us, is it? No. Okay, that's just your resource. That's that, the book, right? The course, oh, I'm sorry. The course smart is, it's not free. The course smart are ebooks online. So instead of me always bringing all my books, I just get online and open it up. Well, that's fine. I, I yeah. Know if that was something weird that's going on. No, I'm sorry. Your book. Oh, okay. okay. Does that make sense here? Yeah. Anybody have questions how we did this? So let's look now at the next portion. Well, suppose that Merck decided to reduce its research and development expense by 50%. What would be the short-term implications? What would be the long-term implications? And how do you think the stock market would react? 
Now guys, do you see these are subjective questions? So their research and expense right now is 5,845, Merck, pharmaceutical, okay? Which actually they are reducing their research right now. Um, what's gonna happen? Income would go up. Income's gonna go up. If they reduce this, income will increase. And what else will happen? <coughs> yep, income tax will probably increase also. I'm just thinking logically. Do you know? If research goes away 50%, they're going to pay more income taxes. But ultimately, income will increase, okay? And the retained earnings will increase. Right? So we're going to get a lot more net income if we reduce our research and development. What do you think would happen down the road? developing new product and guys that's what's happening right now without going into I mean sometimes talking about current events is helpful to make sense of what we're doing but think about it right now most of the companies aren't putting out the R&D they used to we're not developing new drugs why do you think do you think that's it do you know what I think it is Obamacare. We're not going to get into politics here, okay? <laughs> but I mean, it's happened. They expected, think about it though, it cost a heck of a lot of money to produce these drugs. And I'm not saying they haven't made it huge. You know, when certain drugs are 250 bucks a month to take one pill a day, uh, you know. and then once the patent goes away, it which when you compare it to Obamacare, it could be an uncertainty on future regulations of government or policy, Absolutely. Right? But think about what's happened right now in our society. I come from a family, I'm the only one in my family that is not in the medical field. One second. Mm -mm. 